We love the San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep Clark. Garrison Hurst, Stiff Farm going 99. Don't get it twisted. One and all with prime time. John Taylor, Jerry Rice down the side. This is the 49er Faithful UK show. Training camp is done and the roster is set. Except for a couple of minor contract issues to sort through with a couple of minor players. The 53 have been selected and joined by another 16 to form the practice squad. We will have a look at the roster and hopefully answer the most important question. Can this group go one better than last year? I'm Gareth Ellis and I'm joined by Paul Hope. What's up, Fairfell? And Lee Gowland. Hey, fellas. You missed all the excitement last night, Gareth. I did. I did. I was... I was otherwise uh, engaged with um, household duties, sadly. Um, what what did I miss? What did I miss? Go on, Paul. Fill them in. Well, we nearly had Patrick Willis on the live. You nearly? Nearly. Yeah. So. In the same way that I nearly had Patrick Willis come and join me for dinner. No, no. So <laughs> on Saturday, Lee was at a wedding and I received a message from Jordan Spector who's an artist who has put together a trading card of Patrick Willis. And he sent me a message, Gareth, you know me. Would you like to help me on social media and share this card when it gets released? And I was like, of course I will. He then followed it up with, Patrick might be able to come on your show. Is that an option? So I sent that message to Lee Gowland, even though he was at a family wedding. And uh, it kind of went back and forth. So we decided to do the live topic yesterday on Patrick Willis. But we were kind of on tender hooks because he had other commitments that he had to honour. So we were kind of, we had a small window of opportunity and we were hoping he'd jump on halfway through the live. But as me and Lee waffled on for 90 minutes, Gareth, it got towards the end and we realised that it wasn't happening. But uh... he wouldn't have got a word in, basically, is what you're saying. So <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Was, yeah, yeah, sorry, I missed it. I, I will be able to catch it some uh, on some sort of um, platform. YouTube, though, if anyone else yeah. has missed it. Yeah, so it is on our YouTube channel. And you also will have missed Lee mm. Gowland released some information about a little gathering Ooh. that's happening in London town in a couple of weeks, Gareth. Go straight in. I've, I've, that was going to be the first topic. And I know Lee likes to tease us. So what can he tell us? Yeah, so the tickets went on sale yesterday, and I say they went went on sale. Um, for the standard ticket, it's free, so you just have to register. Um, I've no idea how many people's registered at the moment, but I do know the tickets that you had to pay for, which are VIP tickets. Those are sold out, so there's only twenty five of those, and I actually think they didn't sell out as quick as I expected. So those tickets, believe it or not, went live yesterday at three o'clock. We didn't know about that. <laughs> So I wasn't sent the link for the VIP tickets until I think it was half eight last night. Um, And we immediately ran into issues where if you're trying to buy a single ticket, it wouldn't allow you to do it. It would come up saying there's none available. We quickly worked out that, well, if you buy two tickets, it works. So then had to get in touch with the 49ers. Um, Unfortunately, the people that were actually supporting this are based in the UK. It was out of hours for them, so they didn't solve it until this morning. Um, but that didn't stop people like buddying up to buy two VIP tickets and share them between them. Um, but the VIP tickets didn't sell out until 2 o'clock this afternoon, and there was only 25 of them. So I was quite surprised about that. Well, kind of surprised about that, because I'll fully admit I don't think it's worth it paying £49 for what you get. I, I don't, honestly. Um, because the advantages of the VIP ticket, you get your own dedicated entry. So there'll be two queues, one for VIP ticket holders, one for standard ticket holders. So obviously with only 25 um, VIP ticket holders, we go straight in, straight upstairs. Um, The other benefit is you get a free drink when you come in, but (laughs) you've just paid £49, so it better be a really good drink. And um, you you get a guaranteed photo opportunity with the alumni oh. but the alumni will also be downstairs during the night they will be making the rounds doing the floor walk and pretty much like what uh, Joe Steely did um, the reason I went for it is because personally I wanted, to, I wanted to get somewhere where I could actually escape for 10 minutes and just yeah. chill out because what I found in every single uh, meetup so far is 
everybody wants to come over and talk to us, which is great. Love that. Um, but it gets to the point where it's the whole of the night and I don't actually get to see the game. So for me, that was the uh, the motivating factor. Um, other than that, what, what else do you get? You, you just get a guaranteed seat at a table, to be honest, in a, in a smaller room upstairs. And it's not an enclosed room either. So it's like a mezzanine. So you can like look over the side and see every downstairs. Um, what watching the game there? And to be fair, I'll more than likely spend much much of the game downstairs anyway, doing the floor walking type of thing. Um, so for me, it was just mingling. About, yeah, every now and again, if I've had enough of mingling, I can go somewhere, just sit down, watch the game for a little bit before I get up for round two. You do realise you've opened the door to the mm. sit down jokes already, Gowland. I can't yeah. believe you've walked into that rabbit hole, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Mentioning You're no right, names, mate. Brett Sinclair. Right, well, it's Martin Hughes that you need to be worried about, or I need to be worried about. Mm. But yeah, so, I mean, that that's going well. Um, hopefully, we will find out how many tickets have been sold or registered sometime next week. Um, there's 100 on the group, said the go on. That's on the Facebook group. And then we've got Discord, where I, I would imagine there's another 50 people who aren't part of Facebook who've said they're going. So at the moment, it's looking like 150, but it's early days. Um, I'm expecting an announcement about who the alumni is no later than Friday the 13th, so it's Friday oh. before the actual event. I think it could be as early as Tuesday the 10th. Um, the reason I think that is because when I've been speaking to the 49ers every time I'm trying to get some information, um, the response I get is, you'll get some information after we've done our activities for the Jets game, which, which is, is obviously fair Monday night football, yeah. because week we're concentrating week. on that. Yeah. Once we can get a, get over that hurdle, then we can supply with more information Ooh. and we can basically make everything official. Yeah. So e- even though I know... Um, Everybody else will get to know before they get down to the actual event themselves. So if you're worrying about what jersey to take, um, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much unless you're actually leaving quite early. I do know that there's one person who's leaving for London on the Thursday rather than the Friday, but they have family just south of London and he's staying with family. Um, so obviously, if he doesn't find out by the Friday, then you know you bang out of luck, really. Take all your shirts. Um, yeah, yeah. Take all your jerseys and then choose. Don't, don't tell Gary Thorpe that. I still <laughs> remember yeah, how actually. many he turned up to at Leeds. Yeah, change it every quarter. <laughs> I think what um, we need to mention as well, Gareth, is mm. number wise, when you go onto the free ticket, it allows you to get up to four tickets. So again, we don't know how many people are coming down, you know, twos, threes, fours. And I think we talked about it on the live, the reason for the VIP area. I think Joe and his wife, as gracious as they were with the time last year, Gareth, I think they were very on top of everything. And I think having that breakout area. And I think, like you said, Lee, for for me, the £49, I agree. I was like, oh man, I can't believe I'm paying this. But I wanted guaranteed entry because as the admin team, we have said to the Niners, we're here to help, like we did last year. So actually getting in to the venue early, having somewhere to put our stuff, as you've said, but we'll be mingling, we'll be working around. It's not a case of those people in the VIP aren't going to be downstairs. And I think maybe Joe Staley was so epic that I don't know whether the experience will be quite the same because I think Joe signed everything that was put in front of him. He posed for a load of photos. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I'm just wanting people to temper that the experience might be slightly different, especially when you've said the VIP guarantees a photo opportunity. I'm looking at it, Lee, like the 49ers rush road trip where John Chapman yeah. has his tiers and the yeah. certain benefits of those tiers. I may be wrong, but that's just how I've read the room anyway. No, yeah, I, I think they're going along that route. I agree with that. I agree with what you said about Joe, Joe and his wife. I, I think it was very crowded. They couldn't really relax that much. Joe kind of was pulled from pillar to post. He wasn't given five seconds to actually chill and enjoy the game. Um, I think that's more than likely what was going through the mind. Uh, I've actually had somebody reach out to us this afternoon and ask about the VIP tickets. And actually what I said to them, Paul, was pretty much what you said there. I don't think it'll be the same sort of experience as what we had last year with Joe. I think 
because of that, because of uh, the room we had, the fact there was no space there. This is why they brought it in, so that the alumni's um, family have somewhere where they can like move away, just chill while they're in there and enjoy being in London. Um, having said that, we have been told that the alumni will be floor walking downstairs. Everybody will get to meet the alumni or see the alumni. Um, but the only people who will be guaranteed a photo opportunity will be those with a VIP ticket. But you never know. I mean, it might not be anywhere near as well attended as last year because you don't have the international series game. Do, you, uh, um, do we know the um, capacity of the venue? 500. Well, wow. Yeah, it's actually much bigger than, um, wow. than what was it, the Broadleaf, mm. which is now called the Broad, uh, Broadwood. So it does say on the 49ers website, Gareth, where they're advertising the link, that doors open at half four. Again, there's that little caveat, which says first come, first served. Got to point out, it is a 49ers event. It's not our event. So I don't think they're expecting it to be oversubscribed because last year, Lee, there was the overflow venue. I don't believe there's an overflow venue. So I'm, I'm expecting the Niners yeah. want to fill it, but I don't think... As a group, we are worried at the moment that nobody will get in. Mm. I think there was a bit of panic last year, Gareth, on the run up to London. Was were people going to get in? And then there was, you know, people texting saying that they're queuing outside the pub at twelve o'clock, and there was all that kind of panic. I think it won't be as stressful this time around. Maybe famous last words from Paul Hall. I was but... going to say, speak for yourself, mate. <laughs> no, but like you I mean, said, I, we've I, got... I was up until two o'clock this morning sorting tickets out and oh. talking to the guys. The guys over in Santa Clara and the support team trying to get it sorted. Um, and then I was up early again this morning um, to make sure that the, there was no issues or the issues had been resolved. Um, but like I said, they didn't get resolved until about half 10 this morning. And we just want to point out as well, Gareth, final point before we move final on to the point. roster cut down. The VIP tickets, yes, I've got one. Lee's got one. Yourself's got one. We've mm. paid for those tickets. Yeah, They haven't been given to us. We had the same as everybody else. We had to go on the link, put in our bank details. So we have paid for our ticket as well. And I'm just looking forward to the actual day. And like you said, Lee, once we get no, together, totally. 49 a Faithful UK, now a party, it's going to be awesome. Mm. And if you haven't got your ticket, get your ticket and we'll see you there. And I'm sure Lee, Lee's enjoying having the power of knowing. Um. Yeah, yeah, you are. I, I, I see it on it, your little face. It, it presents some opportunities for marketing. Let's put it that <laughs> way. Well, so we can we can just all wildly speculate about who the alumni might be. Well, you know, we've so, had we've had a Joe Nedney and a Joe Staley. Do we know any other famous Joes? I, I could I could make an off the cuff comment like uh, I, I probably have this person's um, jersey. That doesn't but narrow it down. It, I was going to say if my wife was listening to this she'd laugh because of the amount of jerseys I've got. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't narrow it down at our league. At no, all. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. It, it's interesting, off the back of last night's live show, I have seen a new name bandied about now as who it could be. You're enjoying the spe wild speculation. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's your reward for those uh, late nights it, and early starts. It, it certainly is. It certainly yeah. is. It's, in, it's interesting to see. But like I said, uh, I'm, I'm expecting everybody to know um, well in advance of the Sunday who it is because the 49ers want to announce it totally of course there's just like this little nervousness about them saying well we don't want to announce it until they actually step foot off the aeroplane and they're not that too is, in until yeah. the Friday it's expectation so, management it's sensible it is sensible so you do not need to text me Gareth Nadji any of the other admin no members asking me. who the uh, special guest will be I mean I did add my own option, Gareth, to the Facebook poll, and that was our very own El Presidente. I did that mm -hmm. to cheat this morning. But, uh, yeah, I am enjoying the speculation, Lee, and you're just sitting yeah. there enjoying it all, Yeah, buddy. I mean, I mean, while we're talking about this, I'll just have to say a uh, nice try to Neil Jepsum, Jay Peplow, um, I think it was Oliver <laughs> Streetfield, who else? Andy Smith. Um, I'm sure there's somebody else as well who, who tried to... Um, twist my arm Bro, into giving it, it away yeah yeah you're very good at keeping your secrets lee so oh, yeah. better yeah. not put too much too much pressure on you uh, i look forward to the the announcement gotta say i'm uh really looking forward to it and I, it's really good i think being an early 
um, early season game, you know, week two game. I think it sets us up for the season. I think it's great to have uh, us all get together so early in the season. Um, it's great to get together any time. It's great, obviously, at the business end. But I am looking forward to uh, starting the season um, uh, with a with a cracking game. So shall we actually get down to the topic of today, the uh, roster? But we're going to start somewhere else. We're going to start with those couple of contractual um, hiccups that I mentioned at the beginning. And since you've been in a nice, good, smiley mood, Lee, I'm going to hand it over to you with the words Brandon Ayuk, discuss. Yes. So up to probably the last couple of days, I, I've been much of the opinion that Paul is. Let them get on with it. Their players deserve to get paid the money. Um, teams easy, easily cut players and forget about contracts. But now I'm at the point of thinking, you know what? He's been offered more money or money he wants elsewhere. New England Patriots offered him the contract he wanted. Um, he, he turned them down. The Cleveland Browns offered him the money he wanted. He's turned them down. It's obviously not about money because he doesn't want to go to a team that aren't going to compete. So he's wanting his cake and he wants to eat it. He wants to be paid as a top five wide receiver. And I've got news for him. He's not a top wide five wide receiver. The, the things that we've had in the past, George Kill, he was the top tight end. Let's face it. And he should have been paid as a top tight end. Trent Williams, he's a top left title. And he should have been paid as a top left title. Nick Bosa, he's the top defensive end. He should be paid as a top defensive end. Fred Warner, he's the top linebacker. He should be paid as the top linebacker. Christian McCaffrey, he's the top running back. He should be paid as the top running back. Brandon Ayuk, he's a top 10 wide receiver. That's what he should be paid at. He's being offered a contract that puts him in the top five. Take the money, get a ring. Mm. Stop being stop being this little kid who wants everything. Because I am, I am fed up of it now. I think he's being given a fair contract for the value he brings back to the team. And I don't know why he's got it in his head that he's worth a lot more than what he's being offered. Just because of the other contracts, he can't compare himself to Justin Jefferson because he's not. He's not C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb is a better wide receiver. That That's just facts. You look at uh, Am Amon Ra, St. Brown. I think overpaid. he's a better wide receiver. Yeah, I think he's overpaid for what he gave him. I think he's overpaid, but I still think he's better than Brian Brandon Ayuk as well. Really? So, mm. yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I hope it gets so sorted before the Jets game. If we trade him, we trade him. I, I don't care anymore. Honestly, I don't. I just want players on the team that want mm. to play for the 49ers. Totally. And I think that's. I think that's it's that's getting to the point where. Yeah, I think it's getting to the point where it's gone past that line. And if if the reports I've seen today on tw uh, Twitter are correct, apparently his agent is getting sick of him as well. So his agent has gone out and done everything that he's asked for. Right, I'll get you this contract. And then he's turned them down. Well, I don't want to, don't want to play for that team. But it's the money you wanted. What do you want? Do, do you want to play for a team or do you want the money? Mm. Make, you, make your mind up. Yeah, and he's, so he's I, had I plenty hope of thinking sorted. time. He has had yeah. plenty of thinking time. I mean, I said he I was has. bored of this when was it uh, weeks and weeks ago, and it's just like those are your options make your decision. Do, yeah. do you know what I think it is? And I'm going to use an English an English football uh, analogy for this. I, I think he's got a lot of Jimmy Five bellies around him. P people who who he's brought along. Through his career, through through high school, through college, now into the NFL, who had given him some really bad advice, and he's not listening to his agent correctly. He's listening to his friends. It's the same thing that happened with Gaza. Gaza had no discipline because he took Jimmy Five Bellies everywhere they went. They were like two kids. They never yeah. ever grew up, and that's what this feels like. You, you saw what happened just after the Super Bowl when I think it was his partner or his wife. Um, she was tweeting about, yeah, thanks thanks a lot, San Francisco. We out of here or whatever it was. And then either a friend or relative doing the same thing. He, he's got too many distractions around him that are turning his head. And he, he, he shouldn't be listening to them. He should be listening to what his agent's telling him. Yep. Paul, you want to weigh in? Yeah, Let I think that... 
the, let the Lee counter- calm down a little. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the counter argument as well, Lee, is we saw last year that Nick Bosa didn't budge. And I think there's talk in the Bay Area that the 49ers were adamant that we're not going to get burnt again, that the front office want to win negotiation. And, and like you said, Gareth, a few weeks ago, you, you were fed up of it. I mean, if you look at it on paper, Brandon Ayuk is a 49ers player. He's contracted to receive 14.1 million this year. And then that's it. So you used an English football reference, Lee. I'm looking at the Jerry Maguire. I love that movie. Rod Tidwell mourned that he didn't get the contract and everybody else was getting paid. And Jerry Maguire had to say it when because you're playing with your head, not your heart. Now, obviously, that was fiction. But you're right. I think Brandon Ayuk's listened to his wife, I think it is, his brother, his camp around him. But I'm reading that the Browns, as you rightly said, offered him the money he wanted. And Cleveland weren't one of his preferred partners. And, I mean, we don't know the dollar figure, but if you look at Twitter, it's believed we offered him 26 to 27 per year. It was guaranteed money that it was sticking at, but it looks as if the Niners have come to an agreement with his agent, but maybe he's pushed the bar up. And you're right, Gareth, you see the fact C.D. Lamb signs a four-year $136 million contract extension with about $100 million guaranteed. Brandon Ayuk isn't getting that. And you're right, Lee, you have to be careful because his leverage is running out. If he sits this season out, he can't afford that. If he goes in and plays half-hearted, Carl Shanahan's not going to play him. So then you fast forward to next year and his value will have dropped. And will he be wanting the money that we offered him? And I said to you two chaps off, I've come back off holiday and I expected it to be done. I was in Disneyland at phone off Tracy was like are you okay Paul I was like oh the Brandon Ayuk news might break the Trent Williams news might break and then I touched down in England last week I was switched my phone back on zero update so I'm kind of at that stage now I'm, I'm getting fed up to be honest buddy I just want it done either way yeah that's uh, that's it it's make the decision there there's the offer you know there isn't this imaginary third decision where you get the the Browns or Patriots money but get to stay at San Francisco because there's a reason the Patriots and possibly the Browns can offer you that. And, and you know, even if you want to go for C.D. Lamb, who's going to be throwing C.D. Lamb the ball next year? If he's taken all that money, obviously there's issues there with Prescott. Does you want to be in the same boat and say, you can take the money, but what, what do you want out of the game? Do you, do you want the ring? Do you want to be 1,000 yards and 10, 15 TDs every season? Or do you want to be how, like, Devontae Adams has ended up on a bit of a, a mess of a franchise. Um, he's got the money, he's got the payday, but is he going to get a wing out of uh, being at Las Vegas Raiders? I don't believe so. Anyway, shall we uh, um, touch briefly on the other one? Uh, Trent Williams still not playing. I think this this is this is more concerning to me than I. Yeah. I think it'll get done because I think Williams. We always knew Williams' contract was two three-year contracts back-to-back, not really a six-year contract. So we always expected this. Um, And I think that given the amount he was going to get anyway, it's only a top-up and a guarantee that he's looking for. Um, But I would have hoped this would have been done by now as well. Yeah, I'm I'm not too sure whether or not we're waiting to find out what Brandon I will take. I can't see it because we do have decent uh, cap space. So I, I don't know what the hold up is there. Ho- hopefully that will get done because it is the more important of the two. I, I think we're dead in the water without uh, Trent Williams, where with Brandon Ayuk, like I said, not forced. Yeah. Stick to on Jennings on every down for me. Yeah. I mean, it comes to guaranteed money. This is where you have to look at ownership. They have to put their hand in the pocket. And maybe, Gareth, that's the delay. CMC got a restructured deal guaranteed money and like you said Trent Williams there's a lot of talk on social media he's got three years left he's got a 70 million dollar contract but you've hit the nail on the head no guaranteed money and he wants that guaranteed money Um, and like you said Lee Mm -hmm. I do believe it'll get done it's just a bit of a worry because I say Trent Williams he doesn't really train to manage him well given that he's 36 and he's got some issues. He doesn't practice as much as other players. But I am kind of worried a little bit like Borsa last year when Borsa got done in the 11th hour, came back in against the Steelers, didn't quite look like Nick Borsa. Mm. I'm worried that could happen with Trent Williams. But I agree with El Presidente. If you give me the choice of the two, give me 71. I want Damn. my left tackle protecting our boy Brock. That's more important to me than number 11 at this stage of the season. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
So, shall we look at the roster? Let's start with Brock Purdy. There he is on the top of the quarterback list. Good not to have a quarterback battle this year, other than the battle for two and three. Um, and since we have both Josh Dobbs and Brandon Iron, uh, Brandon Allen on the uh, uh, roster, um, it's unclear who is actually two and who is actually three. Did you see anything that made uh, uh, you come down on one side or the other for the QB2 role? I thought I did, and then I changed my mind the next game. <laughs> I think it's very, very close between the two. It is. It is. Um, I mean, hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't have to make the decision and rely on either one of them. That that would be the ideal situation. Um, I was watching John Chapman yesterday, and J John had said, uh, Shanahan had turned around and said, at the moment, we haven't decided who the backup quarterback is. I'm really hoping that decision or that, that statement doesn't come back to bite us because it could be that he has to make that choice in the first two, three weeks if an injury happens, and I hope it doesn't. Um, but they're that close. I think the way they would be used, if it does come down to that for whatever reason, I think they'd be used depending on who the opposition is because they are two different type of quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And I think one could excel against a particular team over what the other one would. So I think it could be used. They could be used like that. But overall, as a quarterback room, th this is one of the strongest I've seen for a long, long time. A long time. And I'm quite comfortable with the three quarterbacks that we've got on there. And mm. let's we'll be talking about it later, but we've got another quarterback as well on the practice squad. Yeah. And chuck him into this room. And yeah, I, I am very comfortable with what we've got going forward. How, how about you, Paul? Which one out of Joshua Dobbs and Brandon Allen? Have you favoured one? Or are you a little bit unsure? I've, I've favoured one. I mean, as Gareth said, no Have surprises. <laughs> no surprises to see these three names. And I'm smiling, Gareth, because boy, oh boy, did we used to talk quarterbacks yeah. on 49ers yeah. content creation. Um, I think the NFLPA rejecting that rule, which would have allowed... Uh, quarterback on the practice squad to be brought back up kind of sealed the fate we were running with three yeah. I think if that rule had been brought in Lee I think we'd have seen Allen in the practice squad and I think we'd have seen Dobbs and my reasoning behind that is I think he's the more likely candidate because he's got that experience I know Allen was with us last year uh, Dobbs has flashed that mobile ability he's a little bit different to Purdy but as you said I'm hoping it's a moo point to quote Joey Tribbiani, our friends, I'm hoping we don't need to worry about who the backup quarterback is. But I think as it stands from what I saw in pre-season, Lee, I think Dobbs did just enough. However, there were teams sniffing around Brandon mm. Allen. So I think if he'd gone to the practice squad, I think he would have been snapped up. But I think the Tanner, and I'm not going to try and say his surname because Paul Scrimshaw is listening, we'll get on why we believe he was cut and then picked back up on the practice squad. But no surprises for me, Lee. What about you, Gareth? Is it good to see number five back in the quarterback <laughs> room? A, a number five. It's interesting that uh, you said that's the strongest quarterback room that we've had for a while. Perhaps we didn't know it at the time, but the Jimmy, Trey Lance, Brock Purdy quarterback wow. room had experience mm. and potential, and it all turned out to be the best guy was the last one on, on the yeah. list. Can't so, think so, that that's so, going to happen, but... Um, so uh, you would put Trey Lance over Joshua Dobbs or Brandon Allen? I think at, at the time, on paper, we w I would have said so, yeah. Not having seen... Uh, and that's only because we didn't know what we had in Trey Lance. Exactly, or what we exactly. It was all about potential. It was all about potential. Yeah. But looking at it at that... Uh, well, you know, Brandon Allen is, is potential. We know what Josh Dobbs can do because he does have that, that game experience. Uh, I hope we don't have to rely on any of them. I think Josh Dobbs could be a good captain of the roller coaster um given the his his skill set um i think it could be fun to watch um but not necessarily good for the heart at half past three in the morning yeah yeah so quarterback room should we move on what's up next running backs christian mccaffrey jordan mason patrick taylor jr and isaac garendo with of course the one and only juice tucked in there as the fullback um, some surprises here. Patrick Taylor wasn't a name. I don't think we talked about much in the last shows, the last couple of shows. No, it's been a surprise. I think what's got him in there, Gareth, is being he a is. good pass protector and he did run hard in pre-season and obviously Mitchell has gone on to IR. 
Um, I mean, the one that shocked me was Cody Schrader being released and then the Rams picking him up. And surprisingly, we normally carry Disappointed. four running backs yeah. and one fullback. So it's kind of like, I mean, Garendo showed what he could do as the new kick returner, which gives me hope because Garendo was the one I stuck my neck out for on the mock draft. Jordan Mason is clearly RB1. I'll get it in for Nadji because yeah. my friend's not here yet. The Jordan Mason hype train is leaving do, do. the station. Get those tickets off Nadji Karar. And obviously everyone's favourite, the offensive player of the year, 23, CMC. I'm, I'm happy with this room, chaps. I don't know about you two. What do you make of it, Lee? Um, so, so to me, the surprising thing wasn't the fact that um, Elijah Miss Mitchell wasn't on here. It was the fact that we've put him on season-ending IR and there hadn't been an injury talked about. So that came as a little bit of a shock. I can only assume that he must be, he must have an injury that's going to keep him out all year. He's had surgery, I believe, Lee, on a hamstring, possibly. Yeah, I think right. that's why they've... I, right. think he'd, I think he was carrying a strain and then I think either in the run-up to the pre-season or in the last pre-season game, he really damaged it. So they've put him on season end and IR and he's had surgery. Right, so I, I've missed that information. Um, so that's fair enough then. If he's injured, he's injured. I, I just f found it strange that it came out of nowhere. Um, Isaac Garendo, so he's injured again apparently. <laughs> he's got an ankle injury. Um, but like you said, Gareth, Patrick Taylor Jr., he did not come up on my radar at all. So that was the surprise no, of the running no, back me. room. No. Um, everybody else, I mean, Jordan Mason, he's looked spectacular. He looks spectacular every time he gets uh, every time he gets any game time. And we were surprised last season. Why aren't we using Jordan Mason? We, we could have been running away with games. And CMC is still in there getting battered. Mm, that's, every down. That's yeah. my... Not concerned, but that's much my thought on the room there. I think, uh, yeah. you know, Patrick Taylor is is going to be covered. I think, uh, as in cover, um, Garendo might um, have uh, be a sort of healthy scratch, uh, particularly if he's carrying the injury. Um, love to see Jordan Mason there. Just I want to see him get some touches, um, and particularly what we didn't see last year, which which was him icing the game, which is what we saw yeah. in his rookie year when he'd come on and just have those six seven carries. Um, to finish off a game and give CMC a break. Um, that's just what I want. I want to see him used more than that, ideally. I'd like to see us have a real good one-two punch. But uh, certainly, I just want to see him on the field, um, partly just to give CMC the rest, because yeah. that is that is the yeah. concern for me. Bring um, that energy towards the yeah. end of a game when a defence is tired. Yeah, well, I have fact-checked myself whilst you were doing that. Alex Simpson will be proud. So he hasn't had the surgery yet, Lee. So a right. doctor suggested he have season end and surgery. And when Shanahan was last asked about it, he said, that's why we've placed him on an IR. I don't know when he's having the surgery, but it looks like he's going to. And um, I just wanted to clarify, I like the, the in the group, there was talk of roster cut down. And I think there was some confusion. Someone had put a post about Mitchell. Some people said, why wasn't he caught? He's, you know constantly battling with injuries he's a bust and I saw a few people thinking it was getting a bit like picking on Mitchell now I didn't see that the way I was reading it was just people in the group having a discussion oh this player's injured again this is my opinion but we always want to encourage that on the group Lee we're not all here to yeah. have the same opinion and um, we do monitor that but uh, yeah I, I'm I'm the same as you too I think Mason will be featured more Gareth and I, I picked so. him up in a lot of my fantasy teams so I'm hoping so <laughs> good Shall we move on? Next group, wide receivers. We've usually gone with six, and we carry in seven uh, this year. Debo, Ronnie Bell makes it. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, assuming. Uh, Ricky Purcell, um, Joan Jennings, Chris Connolly, friend of the show, and Jacob Cowan, rookie. Uh, any thoughts on the wide receiver room? Paul. Ronnie Bell. Ronnie Bell, there you go. He's back, baby. <laughs> He's not my player watch this year. Um, I was surprised to see Ronnie Bell in there. Delighted for Chris Conley, as you said, friend of the show. The soundbite he did for us in the Super Bowl week puts a smile on my face. But he's earned it, which is what Carl Shannon has always been good at with this room. Jacob Cowan, a kind of... I think I, I need to be careful because Cowan has flashed in pre-season. And if he takes some more meaningful snaps in football... As we've just said at the start of the show, Ayuk situation could become a little bit more in favour of us. But no, I'm, I wasn't 
overly surprised, Lee. Uh, I mean, the chosen one was cut, so I don't think anyone had ordered those jerseys. Danny Gray, he had that great highlight reel with Trey Lance against the Packers, but I think he had that was his one reception, or he had one reception in the regular season. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. But for me personally, there wasn't any surprises with this. What about you two? I, well, I think that's I think that's a fairly strong wide receiver room, to be fair. Mm. And the only surprise was Ronnie Bell. So I, I didn't have him in my 53. I, I thought he was out of the door, um, purely because I thought we were only going to keep six receivers and we've kept seven. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like that. I, I like that uh, wide receiver room. I'm over the moon for Chris Conley, friend of the show, mm. because he did, he, he did um, have some pretty important catches for us towards the yeah. back end of the season during the playoff run. Um, so I'm over the moon that he's getting a go. Uh, Jacob Cowan, I like what I see from him. I wish I could have seen something of Ricky Purcell, but uh, at the moment we still haven't seen him properly. So it's going to be interesting to see how he plays, see whether or not he can translate his uh, college performances into the NFL. Hopefully he can, because if he can, then it's another reason why we can just trade Brandon Ayuk. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm happy with that, and I'm expecting to see Debo Samuel get a lot more targets through yeah. the air this year. Mm. I was going to say he's looking, he's slimmed down a little bit. He's looking hungry. There was a lot of talk that it was going to be Debo or Ayuk might be traded back in the next year with the contracts yeah. and stuff. I wasn't too keen on the number one jersey, but it's grown on me to the point where I keep looking at it on the 49ers shop, and I think shall I press the trigger because I like that one. But I mean, the final note before you jump in, Purcell. It's interesting that the team have just said that they knew about the shoulder injury. So obviously, as content creators, you're analysing everything that they're doing. He hadn't missed a game in college. And then you think, hang on a second, where is he? And he's been back this week with the blue non-contact jersey, Lee. But maybe we always say that sometimes the Niners draft these players with a year down the line. And maybe that's what Purcell's been drafted for. Get him in the building, get him used to the offence, get him fully fit. And then maybe next year we see the best of him. Who knows? Mm. Yeah. So, f funny enough, we we've kind of missed what we discussed before we came on the show. Let's say we've got a graphic on the screen with all the wide receivers on there. <laughs> so, obviously, yeah, number one, Debo Samuel, 10, Ronnie Bell, 11, Ayuk, 14, Purcell, 15, Jennings, 18, Conley, 83, Cowick. Now, the reason I'm reading them out like that is because what Paul mentioned about the number one and uh, Debo Samuel, I'm looking at that list and that list of wide receivers, it's just strange that only one of them is in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Where traditionally it's old school, you used old that, school yeah. Yeah. your age. Youngsters <laughs> yeah. will be like, well. <laughs> I'm glad I've got a seat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so, going to be the running joke this season. On it the is, pod. isn't it? It is, isn't it? <laughs> so what about you, Gareth? What, what do you think of that uh, wide receiver room? Surprised the bell made it. I thought he was going to yeah. be the odd man out. Um, I wanted and was pleased to see Connolly make it because I think he'd shown last season that he was reliable when he had targets he made those couple of uh really important catches uh, uh so great to see that he's made it i think cowing well, well, is if, if you want to talk about chris conley let's use his proper name chris conley friend of the show friend of the show chris friend of the show conley uh, uh jacob cowing excites me he's possibly on my radar for my player watch just not yeah. sure other than kick returns he does seem to be potentially could be one of the first up for the new kick return um that would be the only thing that would hold me back um uh, knowing how uh, hard shanahan is on the first year receivers um and he wants to make sure that all of their roots are perfect and crisp uh and obviously his exacting standards are difficult it's going to be difficult for Purcell as well i think um to get that many targets in his year one um and i think debo is potentially going to feast this year he's he looks hungry um and i think he wants uh, as many many targets as he can get and i do wonder how we're going to feed all potential seven of them um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have a couple of healthy scratches out of the wide receiver uh, group um, for game day uh, suiting up should we move on to tight ends because that moves into something else that I was going to mention only two tight ends which is a bit unusual we have had a slightly different roster structure this year we have no surprises Mr George Kittle uh, friend of the show or at least UK faithful flag owner George Kittle uh, number 85 and number 88 Jake uh, Tongs Tongues I assume Tongues. Tongues. I've, I've heard pronounced Tongues by a lot of the uh, content mm. creators from California. 
must be to- must be Tongas then. It, it struck me as odd at first, tight, uh, only two tight ends, but then I have thought it through and Shanahan's going for this positionless type offence and we know if you want somebody to line up tight to the line of scrimmage in the classic tight end position, Debo could do it, Jennings could do it and Juszczyk could do it. So I do wonder if we're just looking at, we've gone for speed um, or it's just a sad indictment of the other tight ends we had on the roster, um, some of whom have obviously been cut. Uh, what do you make of the tight ends group? Because I thought this was a, was an interesting uh, choice, these two names. Lee, yeah. kick us off. Yeah, go on, oh, Lee. Go on then. Um, so I was, very, I was very, very surprised that we only kept two. Um, not surprised at all that we could Cameron Latu. Um, a little bit surprised that we could Braden Willis. But definitely not surprised that we got rid of Latu. Um, keeping two tight ends, I think it kind of shows how the offense has, has developed under Purdy because we've changed the way we do things now. We do throw the ball a lot more. Um, and I, I think there's a less of a reliance on the tight ends that we used to have when we had um, Jimmy Garoppolo under centre, where you needed that little bit extra protection because you didn't have a quarterback who knew how to escape pressure. And, and I think that helps. So two, two tight ends, and obviously we've brought one back in again that we did cut. It's going to be interesting to see how they play. Um, would I have kept Tongas over Sarbert? No, I think I'd have gone for Sarbert, to be honest. Um, but obviously, like I said, we have actually brought them back in. So, yeah, yeah. it's a small room to evaluate, really. Yeah, I was going to say, Gareth, it was the biggest surprise for me, given how we've talked on this show about, you know, Shanahan needs, you know, two tight ends. And you said Ellie Sorbert was the number two option throughout camp. He was yeah. the second best tight end. But I think it's that roster kind of... 4D chess that we talk about. I think they've released Sauber. No, nobody else is going to pick him up. And like you've already said, there is in the section later on when we talk about players who have been cut. He's already been brought back. Um, I think Tongas is going to be the preferred receiving option behind Kittle, and I think Sauber is going to play the Charlie Warner kind of role. So I think we will have the three tight ends that we used to seeing Gareth in the season. But yeah, as Lee said, it's a small tight end room to. Um, to talk about but George Kittle UK flag faithful holder yeah baby <laughs> the, the only concern of course is is that depth K- Kittle has missed games for most of the last few seasons uh, as if not all of those seasons he's missed at least a couple of games uh, so that would be the one concern um, what what would we do um, if he's uh, if he, we have to miss him for two or three games um, big loss for Charlie Warner. I was I was a big fan of, of Charlie Warner yeah. and his dirty work, um, but he went off to uh, to Atlanta, I think, and got his payday. Uh, so no uh, uh, no complaints there. Best of luck to him. Um, but yeah, interesting how we've changed, and I hadn't really thought that about Purdy. Perhaps that we are going to look at, at a slightly different um, uh, offensive uh, approach. Um, and I think it's that we've gone for speed, um, and that's something we can potentially look at on the defensive side of the ball as well. And I do wonder if that is something to do with the with the kickoffs um, and who are those extra players you take to fill out the roster. Shall we move on to the last part of the offense, the O line? Um, for for those listening, uh, John Feliciano, Nick, Zed. Can never get that one. Jake Brendel, Aaron Banks, Colt McKivick, Spencer Burford, Jalen Moore, and Dominic Pooney. Um, with, of course, one name currently absent due to his contractual um, holdout with Trent Williams. Um, what do you make of this group, Paul? You're itching to talk O line, I can see it. Yeah, it's a tricky position group to start out without Trent Williams being on there. Um, there's been a few talk about him not counting against the 53 man and why not? And that's good to see there's new members in the group and we're trying to point out in Discord that it's to do with like he's on the did not report kind of reserve, did not hold out, yeah. whatever. So no team can pick him up, so rest assured. But uh, Shanahan himself has always said, Gareth, that he's not high on investing draft picks in the offensive line. He likes his system. He likes them to play a certain way. 
Dominic Puny has been proven to be an absolute steal in the fourth round as pre-season's gone on, as the likes of John Chapman and Brad Graham, who know more than me, have been saying he looks quick. There was a drill that they do in the combine. I think it's the three-cone drill. And Puny was one of the quicker offensive linemen. And it shows, I mean, there's been footage of him in pre-season getting out in front of the blockers. And you think, he's an offensive lineman. He got an half shift. So, <sighs> Feliciano, bit of a loss. Lee's favourite. Uh, Z- Nick Zakelli, I think it is. I'll try and pronounce yeah. one. Because Paul yeah. Scrimshaw's got the old bingo card out. Nice one. <sighs> Thank you, Paul. You're welcome, Gareth. I'm here to help. I mean, I think the front office is expecting Trent Williams to come back in. This group looks a lot differently with Trent Williams in there. If Trent Williams isn't there against the Jets, then I think the next pod that we do before that game, offensive line could feature quite highly. But what do you make, Lee? I'm, I'm waffling. Jump in and save me, mate. Um. So so straight away, I'm going to jump in and, uh, and back up my guy from last year, who, who I kept tabs on, and that's Colt McKivitt. He's entering his second season as a tackle now. Not a second season in the NFL. Um, people need to remember, last year was the very first time he'd ever played a tackle. He was always an interior lineman. Um, and as the season went on, he grew in confidence. His performances increased. And towards the end, he looked like a decent right tackle. He's now starting a second year. And I think that progression will continue as well. So, I said it earlier, with Trent, with Missing Trent Williams, we are dead in the water, if I'm honest. I don't trust Jalen Moore to be able to protect Purdy like Trent Williams does. And I, I think it um, not only does it uh, impact on Purdy, it impacts on the run game as well. Mm. And that's huge. That's huge for us. Um, but outside that, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. The quicker John Feliciano can come back from injury, the better, because I think he is a good piece on that line. Um, Dominic Pooney, like Paul said, I think he looked excellent. He he's going to be a steal of the draft. Aaron Banks, he's carrying an injury. Hopefully, um, he gets back to full fitness as quickly as possible. Spencer Burford needs to find that form from season one. Um, his rookie season, he was great. Last year, he was pretty damn poor. So he has to uh, turn the corner. And Jalen Moo has been moved all over that line from the day he entered the league. So he's done well at, at left tackle, but we're not the same team without Trent Williams. We're I was surpri- not the same team. I was surprised, Gareth, to see Kingston released, and I knew he wasn't going to pass waivers because yeah. he'd look good in preseason. And there was another, there was another lad that we released, uh, Nugent, another promising rookie, Drake Nugent. Yeah. So, I mean, offensive line is something the main content creators have been talking about for weeks and weeks, Gareth. Um, but it's not normally my area of expertise. This is your baby normally, <laughs> Gareth, offensive line. So you did well to hand over to me I, and Lee first. I, I don't know where I've got that reputation from. It certainly isn't earned. Um, <laughs> but it's it's been it's a stable group, assuming that Williams is going to be back. Um, and I think Lee covered it nicely that, that some of the guys we've had concern about are, we hope, only going to get better. Uh, they're only going to be be more experienced. Um, and as a unit, they've played together now. Pretty much it's going to be the same starting unit with, with Pooney added. Um, I think over uh, 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 Feliciano or, or Burford. So I'm hoping it's a better unit. Uh, it's, I think, got to be a better unit. I think the last two seasons we've been in this position at the beginning and talked about our offensive line as probably being the the weakest unit, or certainly the unit we had most concern about. Um, that might still be the case, but I do think this this unit of the offensive line is certainly better, uh, I think, than last year's, or should be. Um, certainly has the potential to be purely on those uh, accrued experience for players like Banks uh, and McKivitz. But yeah, the the. Big issue on that particular list is the name that is missing. Um, but I think we, we're confident. Trent Williams knows around the league. He doesn't want to go anywhere else. I don't think he wants to be leaving. It's just making sure that uh, he's obviously taken care of if if there's a, uh, an injury um, with the last three years on his contract. The, the offence as a whole, I'm going to ask the burning question. Is this offence better than last year's? Lee? With 
with Trent Williams in there, yes. Yeah, assuming Trent yeah. is there. And, with, with, and assuming Ayuk Dolph. is there. And assuming who was there? Ayuk. I thought you said offensive line. No, uh, the offense, the, the whole, the whole, the whole you're, offense. You're not paying attention. The whole I'm offense. Not, I'm not. It's because I'm looking you at the get word him told, offensive Gareth. line right in front of my face on the screen. <laughs> That's um, it. The offense. Yeah, I think the it, whole uh, offense. Yeah, I think it is. I, I, it definitely is. Definitely. The, re- is. the reason I think it is, Lee, is Brock Purdy's healthy. He looks yeah. like he's bulked up a little bit. Yeah. It was quite interesting to hear that. Um, how bad his injury was, Gareth up until I think even oh. the game against the Eagles. So seeing a fully healthy quarterback who knows the system, has the trust of his head coach, the weapons around him. Um, yes, you'd like to see the offensive line protect him, but in Brock we trust. And like you said, got CMC, got George Kittle, got Debo. Even if Ayuk's not there, someone else is going to step up. We've got Joanne in third, Lee's favourite player. Yeah, this, this, this offence. Got Kyle Shanahan at the helm, Gareth. And I've seen a few Rams fans online saying that we're overrated, our time's coming to an end and we're overhyped. And I'm like, let them talk. Because if they're talking about us, it means they're watching us. Mm-hmm. Living rent-free. Uh, I'm uh, of of the opinion, I think this is a slightly better group than than last year's, mostly on, on that, ex- that experience. I don't know that we've really added much because, yeah, Purcell, uh, uh, Cowley, uh, sorry, Cowing and uh, Garendo. I'm not sure they're going to be that much of a factor, but I think the O line should be better. And hopefully, Mason is out of potentially whatever doghouse he was in, and that run game is is going to have a bit more of a one-two punch, which I felt we were um, a little bit missing last year. Lee, you were going to disagree with me then. I could, I could sense. Um, it. Yes and no. <laughs> I, I think disagree with I, yourself. I, yeah. So I, I think Purcell and Cowing are an upgrade on Ronnie Bell and Danny Gray. Fair so enough. although although we haven't changed the starters that much, other than Dom, Dominic Pooney, and to be honest, I think that's a big change. I, I don't think we can underestimate that change from what we've seen of Pooney. Yeah, I, I think we are definitely better than what we were last year. That's good. We're all in agreement. Shall we look at the D? defensive line uh let's start off with the list robert beale jr leonard floyd new free agent signing kevin givens um number 91 paul over to you he doesn't play for the 49ers Gareth, uh, he I does think. yeah 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 does he, he does he was re-signed come on sammy paul. boy sam orky uni that's that's me butchering it because i haven't oh, had a oh, chance to practice it. so Apparently. there you go mark that off your bingo card I've, I've butchered the first one uh, Jordan Elliott, uh, Yatir Gross Matos, Nick Bosa, Yvonne Hargrave and Malik Collins form the defensive line. Uh, some new faces here and obviously uh, a big gap with Eric Armstead uh, now, I think, on the Jaguars pup list. Yeah. Um, but obviously the first season were in, was he eight, nine years with the Niners? Anyway, it's been a long time since we've gone to a season without Eric Armstead in the middle of that line. Uh, new signings, new faces. Paul, break it down for us, the defensive line. Well, 91, I think, is the biggest surprise. Sam, for those people listening, because I haven't practised this, is uh, so he was the first man up when Floyd left last week's game. I think at around £270, chaps, he's a little bigger than others at that position. But maybe that's what we need to stop the run. I think this defensive line has been put in mind to be better at stopping the run. I think when you look at the 49ers as a whole, Gareth, last year, our offense was top five. Our defense was nowhere near those levels. And if we can get the defense back to that level, it's been great to see Bosa, OTA's training camp, leading the team. Sad to see Armstead go, but similar to the IU situation, the team offered him a deal I felt was right. He didn't take that. He's gone to the Jags. And if I'm right in what I think, he's injured already at the Jags or they've had some issues there already. Interested to see Jordan Elliott. I thought that was quite a good pickup. Uh, number 94, Gross Matios. I don't know whether that's the right pronunciation of his name. I'm sure they don't pick these players with me in mind. But I think as a whole, Gareth, I'm quite happy with this defensive line. I'm quite happy to see what the coach does with the defensive line. I think we're going to go back to what we're used to under 
the previous head um, defensive coordinators, you know, like D'Amico and Robert Salah, as opposed to what we saw last year. No bad thing. Lee? Yeah, I think this is going to come down to how good uh, Malik Collins performs, to be honest. Because um, looking looking at that defensive line, I'm on the fence of whether or not we're a little bit weaker or a little bit stronger. I think Yvonne Hargrave has to play a lot better than what he did last year. Yep. I think he was quite disappointing, if I'm honest. So he needs to step it up. Hopefully he will. It's his second year in this system. Um, I'm expecting big things from him. We've already seen injuries to Yita across Matos and was it Leonard Floyd yep. who picked yep. up a bit of an injury, which is worrying because they two, those two came in as high-profile players. Um, Jordan Elliott looks useful. Kevin Givens I was quite surprised about. Now, this time last year, I actually predicted Kevin Givens would make the roster and everybody else turned around and said, no, you're crazy, there's no way he's going to make the roster. And I thought this year he wouldn't make the roster. I actually thought Alex Barrett would stay instead of him. And yeah, we've I'm kept Kevin Givens. Went. So yeah, that, that was a surprise, uh, as was Sammy Boy, Sammy Akwananunu. Akwananunu? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's gone. Sammy Boy. Sammy Boy. Um, but yeah, at the moment, jury's out. Robert Beale Jr. hasn't shown us anything. Obviously, we've got Greg Jack- Jackson, who's on IR at the moment. Um, he's he's to come back and he really needs to start showing something. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But at the moment, I, I am steadfastly sat on this fence. I'm not sure if we're better or worse. It, 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 at a minimum, we've stayed the same. Yeah, but I think that's. it might be fair to say the defensive line was a little bit disappointing last year, I think, compared to what we thought. As yeah. you said, Hargrave, we thought it was going to come in and, and make a lot more impact um, than he did. Uh, it always seemed to be too easy for offensive coordinators uh, to eliminate Nick Bosa because there wasn't really an alternative that was giving them too many uh, sleepless nights before the game. I'm hopeful. I'm I'm really keen to see Leonard Floyd. I hope he could turn out to be a bit of a steal. He seems to be one of those guys who's quietly gone under the radar, but actually has been very effective um, at what he does. Um, surprised again, Kevin Kevin Given seems to have been around in in this sort of um, bit part role. He's now a fifth year player. Um, maybe it's it's all going to come together for him. Um, and a lot of the others. Um, I'm going to have to wait and see because I don't really have an opinion about how, how they're going to perform. I I think the defensive line is overall perhaps weaker than it has been. But I do think when we look at the rest of the defence, uh, it's been a rebalancing perhaps because I, I will say now I think the linebackers and secondary are stronger than they have been in the last few few years. And maybe we are seeing a a potential evolution of defensive philosophy from our, um, unfortunately, ever-rotating defensive coordinators. Uh, And maybe that's uh, uh, we're seeing the the impact of that on the changes in the personnel because there are are a lot of changes this year. We had Bosa, Hargrave and Givens and Beal. I think Beal was practice squad guy last year, maybe. Um, And the rest of them are new faces, aren't they? So... There's been a been a lot of turnover on that line. Yeah. There we go. Stunned silence. Shall we Stun move on? Silence. Linebackers, a, a big group. Um, starting with the um the only one place to start, Curtis Robinson, um, Demetrius Fannigan Fowles, uh, Tatum Bethune, D Winters, the Fredditor, Fred Warner, and Devondre Campbell. Um, with Dre Greenlaw, of course, still on the unable to perform uh, list. She always thinks it's a slightly insulting name, um, but there we are. He is he is pupped. Um, some surprises there, uh, Paul. How surprised were you at this little list? I think again it, we said at the start about the wide receiver room. I think the Niners have done well going into camp, and it's been an open competition. I think Bethune is a surprise on there. I think obviously Lee said we, we released a couple of players that you weren't expecting, and I think. Uh, Last year's seventh round, Graham would have been expected to be brought back. But I think Bethune's more of a downhill thumper from what I've seen in pre-season in training camp. Fred Warner remains a quarterback of the 49ers defence. 
He'll play alongside uh, Devondre Campbell as we await Dre Greenlaw. As you said, Flanagan fouls has split the fan base. Some people love him. Some people hate him. Some people wanted him gone. Some people wanted him back. So it'll be interesting. But I think he's more of the third Sam linebacker in this group. And I think he's better suited for special teams. And you've got to give special teams love, Gareth, to do hold a place in the NFL. But the rest of them flashed during pre-season. They haven't got extensive experience at the professional level. But then I would say that Curtis Robinson, Winters, Bethune have started an NFL game. But I'm not surprised to see these list of names, Lee. Is there anyone else you'd have brought back instead of the ones we've got? Or... Oh, I was a little bit surprised Jill and Graham went. So I expected Jill and Graham to be on there instead of DFF. Um, I'm not one of those that doesn't like Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, but I did think that Jill, uh, yeah, Jill and Graham would end up being on the roster instead of him. Looking at that linebacker room there, I, I think it's strong as it is. I think when Greenlaw comes back, it's possibly the best linebacker core in the league. And I know that's, that's saying something. No possibly Kurt, in that. Yeah. Curtis Robertson, he, he looked great. I thought he looked great in the preseason. Um, Tate and Bethune, I thought he looked handy. D. Winders, he looks quick. And Devondre Campbell, quality experience. I'm, I'm quite excited, excited about the linebacker room because I think looking at our linebackers and what we'll be talking about in a minute, the uh, cornerbacks, safeties, I think this gives us strength to the D-line. And like I said, I was sat on the fence. At the moment, I am going to say the no better, no worse. Um, with the addition of a different DC playing the way we've been playing, other than when Steve Wilkes came in, I, I think overall we're looking good on defence. And I like the look of this linebacker core. Hopefully we can stay healthy throughout mm. the season. Yeah. Totally agree. I was surprised that Jalen Graham went. Um, surprised that Curtis Robinson make it. Um, again, I've I've got no real opinion about Flanagan fouls either way, other than I thought he might have been gone last year. He seemed to be one of those guys who we took as a young player. I uh, can't remember. I think we he was the undrafted, um, but you kind of had him as the development project special teams player, and then he never seemed to push on. So we thought he was probably going to get moved on. But I think he, he is there as a, as a special teams specialist, uh, I think, more than more than anything else, because he obviously has a huge amount of experience um, with that now. Surprise for Curtis Robinson, Tate and Bethune, interesting. Um, bit of a project there, but I think we are seeing that evolution and we're seeing speed. I think that's what we've gone for. I do wonder if we're going to see more of the linebackers on the field at once. I do think it's potentially going to be, particularly on the on obviously the, the passing downs, and I do wonder if some of these bodies are there to basically give a little bit more freedom for someone like Huff or Warner to go hunting the quarterback. Um, and that was my thought, whether we can stack these bodies and people aren't going to know who's going to stick and who's going to blitz. Um, and it's a little bit more keeping uh, quarterbacks on their toes um, in terms of which players are going to line up against them. This I, this is a group I'm very excited over, uh, and I think uh, without doubt, I think even even that group there is the best linebacker group um, because uh, I'm going to be bold. I would say a linebacker group of Fred Warner, Lee Gowland, Paul Hope and Gareth Ellis would still be the best linebacker group in the league. So there's there's a boldy for you. Uh, what's next? Uh, like safeties, it. corners, Cornerbacks. corners, five corners. Um, slightly, it should be six really. Um, one name is missing, which we will come to. Javarius Ward, Ambry Thomas, Isaac Yadam, Darrell Luter Jr., Renato Green, and very sadly, no Sammy Womack. Uh, also on that list or on his own um, is Diomedo Lenore who has been listed as a defensive back rather than a corner. Um, but uh, commiserations, Lee. Uh, Sammy, Sammy was your boy, your pick. Um, he certainly was. He has been picked up um, and is, uh, is going to be getting his balls out for the, for the Colts 
this season. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, yeah. Um, it came as no shock. I mean, I said it, I said it off the NFC Championship game. The fact that he hadn't been uh, active on that game and he's one of our best special teams players, there was just something not right about that. He'd obviously fallen out with um, Kyle uh, or Kyle had just completely gone off him. He wasn't active for the Super Bowl. Uh, and in both the NFC Championship game and the Super Bowl, we could have done with a special team player from Sammy Womack. Um, to keep Ambry Thomas, who, who broke his wrist before the uh, before the cut down, over Sammy Womack, I thought was it, it, it told a story, and it tells another story: the fact that both the Chiefs and the Eagles both put in a waiver claim for Sammy Womack. Obviously, they were unsuccessful because he went to the Colts. And um, but looking at the corner back room, um, Ronaldo Green, he's looking good. Um, Isaac Yedum, I like the way he looks. Ambry Thomas, he's liability at times. Um, and when I say at times, I'm, I'm talking like <laughs> high percentage times. Just, um, just during games. Wards. Yeah, just during games, yeah. Um, Chavarius Ward, Mooney Ward, he's been great for us. And as you said, the defensive back there, which uh, they're giving him a strange title there considering he's been playing outside corner, it could suggest that he's just going to play a slot now. Um, or nickel, sorry. He's going to play a nickel and it's Demo. Mm. Yeah, the 49ers social media team had a bit of fun missing Demo off that list. I saw it on Twitter. People panicked, but I think it speaks volumes of Staley's involvement, chaps. Remember when he was at the Rams? He had Jalen Ramsey, who we love to hate, when he was in his heyday playing well, kind of moved him around. And I think you'll see Ward start across from Lenore, especially um, against two wide receiver sets. I think Demo will move inside on the passing downs and against 11 personnel. And Sammy, Lee, you'll still be forever linked to that draft class. You were still there when Brock Purdy was selected. So you've still got your claim to fame. But uh, like you said, there's something that he quite wasn't doing right that the team didn't see. Yeah. But he's got a chance again in the NFL. But it's interesting, Gareth. A few years ago, cornerbacks, secondary people were whinging about this room. And you fast forward to now. And I think mm. this is a strength of this team. And like you said, the defensive line might not be as good as what we've seen, but you add it to this cornerback room. Do you think we've got a more balanced defence? And I think under Sterling and Sorensen, I think we're going to see a mixture of what we've done in the past added to this dynamic cornerback room. And your boy, Demo, I think he's in for a big season this year. All pro level, I'm going mm. to stick my neck out. I say stick my neck yeah. out. It's bold, but it's not that bold when we see how Lenar's played. Mm. I think it's it, it's a it's a good cornerback room. I am surprised that Ambry Thomas made it um, over over Womack. I thought Thomas's days were done. Um, Isaac Yidham, uh excited to see him. I think again he quietly put together um, a good season last year with uh, with the Saints. Maybe the change of uh, scenery is going to do him good. Um, Darrell Luter. Um, hadn't really seen much of them. He he had a good game. I think that last preseason game, the one that we uh, didn't really get chance to to digest. Um, but when Renardo Green, I think, could be um, a a bigger part of uh, of this year if he can put it together uh, early on in the season and show that he's not going to be a liability. I expect to see him on the field uh, quite a lot. Um, and yeah, Lenore, I. Th- can see Lenore coming in on those blitzes as well, as I just mentioned with the linebackers. If you've got that versatility where suddenly it's one of your uh, uh, linebackers drops back in coverage and you've got a cornerback or a safety blitzing, no one on the offensive line is going to have the duty of picking them up. Um, I, I'm hopeful that this roster that we're seeing, we're going to see quite an unpredictable um, uh, defence uh, in terms of where players are going to line up, what players' uh, jobs are going to ha- uh, what what jobs those players are going to have. You teased it there on the screen, Lee. Uh, safeties and the defensive back. So the safeties, no surprises here. Jair Brown, Talanoa Hafunga, George Odom, and Malik Mustafa. Um, I'm going I'm going to start with this one since I put it over to, over to you. I think this is the best safety group uh, we have had, probably in the Shanahan era. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, that, that's some potential there, assuming Mustafa and Jair Brown are as good as we think they are. Um, but we know how good Hafunga is, and we know, I think, how reliable um, George Odom is. Um, 
I'm very happy with this group. Um, I can't wait to see them uh, 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 causing some havoc um, and laying out some pain. Um, Mustafa obviously had a had a big hit, I think, just at the go line, isn't it? Wasn't it on the, uh, one of the preseason games? Yeah. Um, so I'm... cannot wait for that. Go on, Lee. Give yeah, completely answer. agree with you. Um, this this looks like a really strong safety room. Um, probably the strongest we have we have had for a good long time. N- not just the Shanahan era. Um, we probably going back to 2012 Harbour when we got the Super Bowl. Uh, I think this is a really good room. Can't wait to see Malak Mustafa play. Um, one thing to bear in mind though, this could be Huff's last season with the 49ers. So if Jair Brown and Malak Mustafa play like we think they can play because of what we've seen so far it's obviously a contract year for Hafanga and it could mean that uh, we let them walk we let them go through free agency mm. so just bear that in mind um, but yeah I, I'm I'm really happy about uh, that room there I noticed you've said that while Naji Kara isn't here Lee um, <laughs> but all, all jokes aside it yeah. just goes to show sometimes Lynch and Shanahan get a bit of grief on social media for the way they draft players. And you look at this room and you look at the players that they've picked. Like you said there, Gareth Mustafa, that hit he laid on the Titans play got us all excited. But he'd been displaying that in training camp. We were there last year when J.A. Brown got through on against the Buccaneers and he's grown from strength to strength. And I agree with everything that you've both said. But I just had to stick up for Naji Karali because he's not here to defend his boy Huff. He has too many of them when I think about it. naji has got he's a collection of players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's going to be eyeing Mustafa. Uh, our specialists are definitely no surprises here. Um, Mitch Wisnowski, Jake Moody and the one and only Tabor Pepper. Not really much to say here other than no, I'm glad that we that. don't have to talk about this. The word... The worst part of the off season might be any teams that have kicker competitions or long snapper competitions. Um, they are, they don't excite me. I'm I'm glad we've got these three reliable guys. Um, but interesting to see how they'll uh, go on the um, the old kickoffs. Whether um, Wisniewski is going to be taking the kickoffs, given that I think the new structure is going to expose the kicker to potentially making more tackles. Um, and we do know that Mitch can lay out a tackle in a way that Moody probably don't we don't want to see any thoughts well well, you're right what you said there because i've heard wishnowski described as a possible cheat code because he's an accurate kicker and he's a hard-hitting tackler so in this new format gareth it could be a cheat code but those people who did not like jake moody being picked last year gareth a couple of kickers that were drafted last Mm -hmm. year have been released so it just goes to show that maybe we were right to nab the best of the group because a lot of people were saying, Oh, why did we take Moody as high as he did? But and we've friend of the show, another one, Lee, Tabor Pepper, show him some love. He's always good with a faithful on social media. The graphic says it all. He's got a big smile on his face. Number 46 is back, baby. That's all you need to know, Gareth. I'm reassured. I'm slightly reassured <laughs> that we're, uh, we're obviously we're going into another season without uh, Dante Johnson, but. He is still in the building somewhere. I'm, I'm going to sure say, are we? I'm looking around on the list now. His yeah. name will be there somewhere. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted because I've just seen that the San Francisco 49ers have um, sent out the London Watch Party media. Oh, up there. What's that on yeah. there? So they've just created an event on their actual page. Nice. Oh. Well, I shall, I shall go to you then, uh, Paul. This, this defensive group... Uh, do you think it's better than last year's? I think overall, with the changes to the coach and staff, I've been quite impressed to see Staley working quite hand-on-hand in training and putting his ideas in there. I think Sorensen brings the energy to the linebacker room that was missing under Wilkes. And I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, but I think Shanahan recognised there needs to be a change. I think we're a more balanced from both ends, where previously we were quite strong up front, and as you said, <laughs> didn't matter who was in the backfield, and there was always the same names. But no, I'm I'm quite pleased. I'm just whenever Lee smirks and looks away from the screen, <laughs> you always think what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I was just listening to what you say. Then uh, I was thinking, we obviously a better defense because Steve Wilkes isn't the DC anymore. Yeah, well, 
I mean, Sick burn. we talked about it last year. I mean, you called for it quite early on, to be fair, Lee. And then when he came yeah. down from the booth to the sideline, I think we we looked at it quite closely. I was quite pleased we made the change quickly. Um, obviously, there was a lot of talk, Gareth, whether we'd get Belichick, whether we'd get the Chiefs defensive coordinator. But I think on a whole, everything I've seen in the preseason, all the stuff the content creators have done, it's a more balanced defence. And I'm excited. Uh, I'll stick my neck out. If this can be a top five defence with this offence... It's going to be a hell of a ride this year, fearful. That's all I'm going to say. Better or worse, Lee? Oh, better. better. Oh, I think, like, like I said, I think we better purely because of the coaching change. And then you, you look at, um, I, I think we better at cornerback, we better at safety, um, better at linebacker. All, all those rooms have increased with quality. There's only the defensive line, which is uh, the jury's going to be out on that. Yeah, I think it's... So, it will be difficult to judge, I think, purely on the personnel because of the problems we had last year, which did seem to be an approach, um, again, without being too hard on Wilkes, I think it was perhaps just not a great fit um, across the coaching organisation and what the players we, we used to. Let's say that. Let's hope that they buy into whatever new philosophies the uh, uh, defensive coordinator uh, coaches uh, have brought I think it's a faster defense and I think as I mentioned before I think it's more versatile I think we will be mixing up um, uh, some of the looks and I'm hopeful that it is going to be a more aggressive defense I think that's that's something that perhaps certainly from Salah always seemed to be very solid but play quite safe um, and I do like to to bring the blitz I do like to see the safety's being free to just go and and try and get an interception, um, and hopefully this is a this is a group that can um, instill fear in uh, opponents' quarterbacks because that's what a defense should do. So lads, we've been we've been going for an hour and sixteen minutes. I think we should probably wrap this up um, unless you have anything else uh, to cover. Should we talk about the practice squad? Any any, oh. any names on the practice squad that uh, you want to uh, uh, mention? Let's let's not do the lot. I was surprised to see T. Y. McGill on there. I I thought he would make the roster. Yeah, yeah. I agree Great that he's on the practice squad. I think I, I actually thought T. Martin would make the uh, roster over Ronnie Bell. Hmm. I was going to say, Lee. I think if you look at the practice squad, you can see the dynamics of like. Ambry Thomas, he's going to be put on injured reserve. So maybe Tracy Walker gets elevated. There's a good mix for me, Gareth. Some rookies on there, some experienced players. And I think the practice squad over the last couple of years is an important feature. You will see players on that name, on that list, sorry, step up in the season. Mm. The QB, Lee, you were quite high on Tanner coming back. So I'm guessing you're pleased to see that he's cleared waivers and he's on the practice squad. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy and surprised, to be honest because I thought he put some decent uh, tape on, on, on film there um, during the pre-season. And I would have thought somebody might have picked him up, but uh, we've gotten him back, so I'm over the moon with that. Um, I, I like the way Shanahan does things. He's done it for the last few seasons now. As soon as he gets a whiff of a decent player, who he knows he can't actually get on the roster, because they're not quite better than what we've got on the roster, but somebody who can develop, then he takes them out of the game straight away and he doesn't put anything more on tape. And I think that's kind of what he's doing with Tanner, Tanner Mordecai. Yeah, I would agree with you with that. Mm. Yeah, I'm happy happy with the practice squad. We will probably see a few of these guys suit up uh, throughout the season. Uh, the tight ends there, Mason Pline, I thought he might have a have had an outside chance of making the roster. Um Possibly more so um, than Cameron Latu, as we, we mentioned earlier. I don't think that's a surprise that he's gone. Good to see that Braden Willis is still there. I thought he had a chance. He seemed to be getting the snaps last year, not necessarily the targets, but he did seem to be getting some of, some offensive snaps. Um, so hopefully he, he can, can continue to, to develop. Um, but yeah, a, a solid group. But let's face it, it's not the group we really want to be talking about for much of the season. Um, but interested to see Trent Taylor um, has, has made it. He's, he's going to be hanging around the team. Um, and he was a, he was always a guy I liked from when we drafted him. Uh, never really kind of worked out as a receiver. 
Um, but it may well be that we do need him on special teams. So any any final thoughts on the roster before we wrap things up? No. Purdy good. That's great. Yeah, I, I think with Williams and Ayuk back, we definitely a Super Bowl bound team. I think Williams, and I do think right now, I said it earlier, if we traded Ayuk, I'd still feel pretty confident. I don't feel it in the in the way that if we lost McCaffrey for the season, I'd feel that that was a massive hole. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Ayuk, make your decision, man. I want you to stay, but I want you to make a decision so we can if we can just draw a line under this and we know what's going on. But there we are. Yeah, if Ayuk goes, I'll have to buy a new white road jersey because that's the only white road jersey <laughs> I've got at the moment is number 11. But I know it's been a longer show than uh, normal, Gareth, but it is the roster cut down. It is. The awesome foursome. We're missing Naji Kara. Yeah. We need you back, buddy, but it's been great to get back in. Football is around the Ooh. corner, gents. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we need a long, forward to it. Uh, a long show, I think, to get match fit because um, I, st- I think we probably still need a um, a little bit more uh, practice before we're fully ready for the season. But thank you for joining me, lads. And no thanks problem. To, thank you for hosting. Well, uh, once again, easy, easiest job in sports. Um, but thanks to everyone who listens and indeed watches the show. Hopefully, you'll stick with us for the roller coaster that is the season. Um, and if you're catching the show for the first time, um, looking forward to having you with us for that journey. Don't forget, you can like, subscribe, comment and provide us with feedback if you would like to. We will be back very soon with the Bumper Season Preview Show. We will make our season predictions and possibly some of them might even be bold. So football is back. Prepare yourselves and go Niners. Go Niners. Bang, bang, down again. We love the San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep Clark. Garrison Hurst, stiff farm going 99. Don't get it twisted. One and all with prime time. John Taylor, Jerry Rice down the